This is question 7, paper 2-2 from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International Education. Up the top right, a card to bring you to a playlist that has all my other solutions for this paper. And in the description below, you'll find a link to an image of this question. I recommend you try it before looking at my solutions. So in this question, question seven, we're getting near the end of the exam. So they do get a bit harder. And this question could be split up into probably two main parts. Part, the first part, which is we will be doing in part A, will be integration. We just want to integrate this question. And then part B and C will be looking more at uh, how to iterate a formula. And that's actually fairly standard, the part B or C. You'll see them, questions like that will be fairly similar over the years. But let's uh, deal with part one first, the integration of it. So how do we integrate um, this question? We do each part separately, or at least we can. So, and that's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna look at these, each of these separately. The first part is four over two x plus one, and we'll just do that, dx, uh, between a and zero. So some students are actually quite good at doing these in their head. I, I, in fact, am able to do this in my head, but I'll show you the more uh, standard way, the slower way, but the safer way, the way that you should be able to repeat every time. And then maybe at the end, I'll point out uh, the faster way you could have used. So the more standard way is to look at this and say, this is hard. So let's replace something to make it easier. So what I could replace here is instead of two X plus one on the bottom row, what if that was just you? So we put u equal to 2x plus 1. And then we just have one thing on the bottom row and we just have the integral of u to the power of minus 1. And that's, that's easy enough to do. Uh, there's a few problems here. Well, we'd have a 4 here, I guess. Um, a few problems is dx is out here. We need du. So that's what we're going to do next. We'll find du by finding the derivative of u. The u dx. There's the u there. So the u dx is the derivative of this is just 2. Differentiate 2x, we get 2. Differentiate 1, we get 0. And if we rearrange this, we'll find that, um, I guess, dx we really want to replace. So if we print dx over the 2 underneath and then change the signs, we'll just get dx is equal du over 2. And now we can, um, instead of dx, so we have our 4. We brought it outside the equals. Instead of our uh, 2x plus 1, we put a u to the minus 1, just means it's on the bottom row. So instead of dx, I'm going to put du divided by 2. Uh, divided by 2 can go all the way out here. So this question is the same as this one. one. One important thing to notice, I haven't put 0 and a here, because it's not 0 and a anymore. It's actually, I could find out what letters could go there if I put in 0 here. Actually, well, that'd be it. Instead of zero, we'd have a one, and a would be two a. Well, I guess it'd be two a plus one. It's a waste of time. Don't do that. You don't need to do that for this question because we can just change it back into x when we're finished, and then use zero and a. So let's integrate this. Uh, this is just two outside. The integral of u to the power of minus one. It's a special case. It's one over u. If, if you would rather look at it that way. And the integral is just natural log. So natural log u in this case. And that's it, that's the integral of this, which in nearly gives us this, we just change u back. So the integral of this is two natural log of two x plus one. And we have to evaluate that between zero and a. And that that's uh, pretty much it, let me just, Put in the next part. I guess we put a into this. We'd get two natural log of two a plus one minus put zero in. Let's see what happens when we put zero in. Two zeros or zero plus one. So we get natural log of one. Put that into a calculator if you don't know the answer. But natural log of one is, is zero. So that's it. This is all it equals to. And once we found this one, we now just move on and do the next one. Let me make a bit of room here. Although I will point out, you could have done this all in one go. Uh, u is equal to 2x plus 1. Uh, that means that, I'll, I'll just do a little short bit here. That means that I guess 2x is equal to u minus 1. Um, 8x I'm interested in, so eight, let's multiply them both by 4. 8x is equal to 4u minus 4. So instead of 8x, we could have just put in 
4u minus 4. This is easy to integrate as well. And we could have done this all in one go. So just uh, bear that in mind. I, I just did them separately and it's going to be fine. So we've integrated the left one. Let's integrate the right one here. The integral of 8x uh, dx between 0 and a is, is simply, let's see, we get an x to one power higher. That's 2. And then uh, we divide by 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. And that's it. That's between a and 0. We put in a, we get 4 a squared minus put zero in we get zero again and that's it that's our two parts of this integral so this whole thing let's call it i this whole thing i i equals two natural log of two a plus one and um, plus four a squared hopefully you can read that all the way over there and oh sorry we're not finished they asked us to show that um, a is equal to the square root of 2.5 minus 0 0.5 multiplied by the natural log of 2 plus a. So how do we do that? So this is what we found this integral to be equal. But they already told us it's equal to 10. Uh, I think I can do this all over here. So we get this one is equal to 10. 2 natural log of 2a plus 1 plus 4a squared is equal to 10. Now they've given us a clue what they want this to look like. They want a on its own and everything else in a square root. So that means probably getting a squared on its own. So let's rearrange this and we get a squared on its own. a squared will be equal to 10 minus this one, minus two natural log of two a plus one. The four a, I've not forgotten it. I'm gonna divide them all by four, by four. 4, uh, yeah, by 4 there. Is that correct? Yes, 10 divided by 4 is what we wanted, 2.5. And we'll divide this one by 4, which is 0 0.5. So we're on track here. Square root both of these, we get a is equal to the square root of 10 divided by 4 is 2.5 minus 2 divided by 4, 0 0.5. And this is exactly what they wanted, I believe. Yeah, this one is correct as well. Okay, so multiply by natural log of 2a plus one and that's it that's the answer there that's only part a so this is a long difficult question uh, i quickly say yeah looking at this sum here and um, how people could have integrated this fast they know it's a divide so they know natural log is going to appear so a lot of students would have known well it's going to be natural log of 2x plus one that's what appeared um here natural log of 2x plus one then they knew there was a four already. And they knew this extra two, because we're gonna differentiate this guy. This extra two is gonna become involved. And we're gonna to have to divide by it. They just got used to this over the years. They just knew this was gonna come. So they, they knew a four would be there and they'd have to divide by a two. So a lot of students actually would have just wrote two natural log two x plus one straight away. None of this work here. That's okay if you did that as well. If you get it right, it's okay to take a shortcut. But, um, if you have time in the exam, show them the work, show them where it comes from. All right, let me rub this out and we'll do part B. Okay, part B uh, leaves us with this formula. So if you weren't able to do part A, you already have this in the question. They tell us that A is equal to this, and they want us to use this equation um, and show by calculation that A is, is bigger than one and less than two. So how do we do this? The good news here is this question comes up every year or so. So maybe not quite every year, but maybe every two years. And it's nearly identical. It's a different formula. It's often like X is equal to something, or B is equal to something, or A is equal to something. And that something has another A inside it. So, but it's the same type over and over. And here's how we do it. They're saying A is between one and two. How do we show that? Well, let's just pretend A is one. So A equals one. So we put a, one in for A. And that's equal to the square root of 2.5 minus 0 0.5, the natural log of uh, 2 multiplied by 1 is 2 plus, uh, plus 1. And we just put this into a calculator. 
We clean it up a little bit, like this is a natural log tree, for example. But we put that into a coggler, I have it done here, and we get one is equal to, it's not going to be correct, uh, 1.39. I'll do it to six significant figures, because that's what they want in the next part. But it's not important in this part. You could use two significant figures, in fact, would be enough. So we get that when we put one in. Let's see what happens when we put two in. 2 equals, and we do the same thing here, we get the square root of 2.5 minus 0 0.5, natural log of 2 times 2 plus 1, so natural log of 5, and again we'll get uh, out 2 is equal to 1.3, just checking my notes here, 30203, that's uh, 6 significant figures again. Now what's happened here? Because you're going to have to write something in English. What I would write is, when I put 1 in, the answer is bigger than what I put in. So I, 1 should be the answer. Well, we wanted 1 to be the answer, and the answer actually was 1.4. It's a bit too big. When I put 2 in, the answer was too small. So the answer must be somewhere in between. Think of it like this. As 1 increased, 1 went to 2, the answer got smaller. As 1 went to 2, the answer got smaller. So they must meet somewhere in the middle. The correct answer must be somewhere here in the middle. So 1.1, uh, this answer, well, we can see when 1 gets bigger, this number gets smaller. So 1.1 maybe comes out as 1.38, 1 1.2, 1 1 1.37, 1.4, 1.34 maybe. Maybe that's where it meets, somewhere there in the middle. Um, so, writing something like this, uh, the number is too big for 1 and too small for 2, therefore the answer is in the middle. That is something like that I would write. You'd get full marks for just uh, this part here. It comes up over and over, so pick, pick a sentence you're happy to use and just use it each time. Alright, let's, uh, let's do part C. In part C, it's going to help a lot to use your calculator wisely. So we're going to use the iterative formula, it comes up all the time like I said. And how we do this, how we use this an iterative formula with something like this, all, all that's important is we have some, on a, something on its own, like A on its own, and there's A's inside here. So here's how we do it. We take a guess. We simply guess a first answer. So we already have some work done here. So if we guess 1 as our answer, that will become, uh, let me rewrite this over here as A N plus 1. Sorry, uh, this won't be our guess. Uh, is equal to the square root of... 2.5 minus 0 0.5 na sorry, natural log of 2 times a n plus 1. So what this is here, this a n here, is our first guess. We're going to put our first guess in here. Let's put our guesses in this line. Uh, G u yes, -S. sorry, it's spelled out loud there because I'm a terrible speller. We'll put our first guess in here. We'll put our first guess in here, and that will give us our second guess. So if A1, that's what we're using N here, A1, our first guess, will give us A2, our second guess. Put our second guess in, it will give us our third guess. Put our third guess in, it will give us our fourth guess. And over time, those guesses will get better and better and better. And they'll actually start looking like each other. And that's how we get an answer through this. So let me show you roughly how that would work. We put guess one in. You could do it like we've done over here, really slowly. And you would get out guess 2, 1.39667. That becomes guess 2, 39667. And you put this back into this formula. So we'd have um, 2 times this number. It would take a while, but that's where advantage comes of using a calculator. I'll show you how I would use a calculator over here. Um, what I do is I take my first guess. Now, it could have been 2, your first guess, by the way. That's fine. could have been 27. It doesn't really matter. Um... I would take my first guess in a calculator and write it down. I'd write 1 on the calculator and I'd write equals. Now that, what that does is that puts answer. There's an answer button on most calculators. That puts in your calculator the answer equal to 1. And that's going to be useful. Because I will write this formula over here in my calculator. This is going to turn 5-10 minutes of work into 1 minute of work. So it's really helpful. So I'm going to write this formula on my calculator. I'm going to write square root, I'm going to put in 2.5, um, I'm going to put minus 0 0.5, 
and uh, then I'm going to multiply, let's put in the multiplies I suppose, put in multiply natural log, I'm going to open a bracket, well it will open a bracket for you, I, I'll open another bracket because I'm always just extra safe, I'll put in 2 multiplied by, and then not 2 multiplied by my guess number 1, I put the answer button, and that's uh, going to be very useful now in a moment, uh, close my bracket, I'll just be very safe with all this because one mistake here will cause me lots of problems later on. Plus one, close that bracket. Now what the calculator here has here is a reusable formula. It's gonna always just ask what is answer. Now when you press equals after this, it's gonna change the answer to be equal to 1.39667. It'll have a hundred digits saved in its memory. And if you just press equal, so I've done this already, I have this number has come out. Here's the great thing. The calculator remembers this formula and it never had the number one here. I always had answer here. And now answer has become this number. So if I simply press equals again, it will do this sum for me. I don't have to type it in every time. And it will just tell me my third guess is 1.3540. Um, 2, 2, so it rounds off to 2, that becomes uh, our guess in here, and all I have to do is press equals again, and it'll give me my next guess, 1.35821, uh, I believe, press equals again, it'll give me my next guess, 1.3, uh, my marker's going, I'm afraid, 1.35779, so that rounds off to uh, zero and that rounds up to eight. There, that's uh, six decimals. And this stays going. And what we're looking for, they asked us to find the answer to four significant figures. 1 1.397, 1.354, 1.358, 1.358. We're starting to get it to repeat. It's finding its answer already. And it looks like it's 1.358. Once it repeats twice, you know you have your answer. But we can we can just be, because we can do it so fast, we can stay going. Uh, 3.5784. Again, 1.358, we have our answer. It's repeated itself three times now. I always like to do it three times anyway. But you can stay going. This is, uh, let's see, this is guess 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We can go to guess 10, A10, and find that its answer is 1.3578, um, let's see, 36, so 4. So actually, even though this was guess um, 5, A5, the answer didn't get any different as we went on. It got better over at these decimal places, but it was plenty good enough there. And another interesting thing to note is how long the calculator takes to do this. Equals, that must be a half a second. And that's because the calculator had to do all this work every time. The calculator isn't that smart of a machine. And while you're used to getting it to multiply things instantly, it takes a little more work to do something like this. And we get, this way you can get the answer as good as you want. And for those interested in computer science or anything, this is how you could set a computer up or even fancier calculators to not just, not to have to press equals every time. You could ask a, a computer to do this and do it a thousand times. Now, your, your normal laptop or PC computer will do that in a few seconds, in a moment, less than a second, and you'll get an answer that is very, very accurate. So that's why this sort of thing is really useful. Okay, if you have any follow-up questions about that, uh, I hope you answer that. Your final answer, by the way, is A is equal 1.358. Four significant figures they asked for. So if you have any follow-up questions about any of that, please put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have, have a great day.